All right, last concept but not least. Uh, we have the Advancing Genomic Medicine Research, or AGMR, renewal, presented by Christine Chang, a program director in the Division of Genomic Medicine. All right. Uh, my name is Christine Chang. I'm a program director in the Division of Genomic Medicine, and I will be presenting the concept clearance renewal for the Advancing Genomic Medicine Research Program on behalf of the AGMR team, which includes Jesse Reinach and Renee Ryder. By way of background, some of council might remember that AGMR was first approved um, at February Council 2020 published in June, and it had the R01 and R21 mechanisms. Um, the first renewal was then approved by council last year in February of 2023, and we added on the R03 mechanism as well as small business no sees and an NCI sign-on. Um, the purpose has been broadly the same, and that is to stimulate innovation and advance understanding of when, where, and how best to implement the use and sharing of genomic information and technologies in patient care and in ways that are generalizable and equitable across different populations and settings. So it's essentially soliciting um, investigator-initiated applications in genomic medicine. The scope and objectives are broadly the same too. So projects will be broadly applicable to genomic medicine, investigators new to the field of genomic medicine will be uh, encouraged to apply, and we propose to continue having a yearly grantee meeting to enhance communication, encourage collaboration, and disseminate findings to accelerate genomic medicine research progress. There are a few changes that we're proposing, though. Um, so this renewal does include the previous funding mechanisms. Um, but instead of a small business no see, we're proposing solicitation through the small business PAR. And this would allow applications, all the applications, to come through uh, a special emphasis panel. We're also proposing to have one standing receipt date per year, uh, February 2026, February 2027, and February 2028, to simplify the process. Um, lastly, we would, uh, again, consider foreign applications. So foreign applications were allowed in the first release, but in the renewal, given a limited budget, we wanted to focus the attention on domestic applications. Um, however, in this renewal, we're proposing to consider foreign applications again. And as with all NIH foreign applications, projects would have to show unusual talent, resources, populations, or environmental conditions that aren't readily accessible in the US and show potential for significantly advancing health sciences in the US. Um, this table shows the proposed budget uh, breaking down by mechanism. So we're proposing to fund an estimated uh, 4R1 awards for a total of 3.2 total costs new and competing each year, um, estimating two R21 awards for a total cost of 0.8 million uh, in new and competing each year. And then lastly, um, estimated one RO3 for about 100K in new and competing each year. And if you add this all up, this would be about 4.1 million uh, total costs in new and competing each year. And then as mentioned previously, we'd have a small business um, PARs. So the R41, R42, or STTR, and the R43 and R44, or SBR, uh, would be funded separately through the small business set aside. And we would work with um, our other IC colleagues to have possible sign-on. Um, that's all I have. So as with previous uh, concept discussions, the discussants are uh, Dr. Jarvik, Doc, uh, Korf, and Kulo. Uh, Dr. Korf, would you like to start the discussion off? Sure. Well, first off, you know, I'm hugely supportive of this program. <clears throat> this is where all of the knowledge of, of um, the genome really hits the clinic and, and the challenges of how you actually implement that in a practical way are, are not things that are obvious at all. Um, and I think this has played a big role in paving the way towards implementation of genomics and medicine. A handful of things. Um, it struck me. One is the importance of involving 
groups that have not traditionally been involved in genomic medicine because genomics really cuts across all areas of medicine. And I think encouraging specialties that haven't so far been um, heavily involved will be important. I think another thing that sometimes concerns me is that if you live near a large academic medical center, you have some possibility of being involved in this kind of work and benefiting from it. So finding ways to disseminate this beyond those centers into rural areas and in, into less well-served areas, I think will be critically important. And we talked earlier about the need for community engagement. And you know, likewise, you know, one of the concerns could be that relatively well-off, well-educated people will be motivated to get involved in this. And what about everybody else? And I think this is an area where community engagement um, can have very big payoffs. And finally, how to scale the workforce so that you know, if all your dreams come true and you can actually make a big difference in terms of clinical care, you need to have people who are there at the front lines able to make sure that um, it doesn't take a year to get in to be seen to actually um, take advantage of this. So figuring out ways, whether it's through education, through application of AI systems or whatever, but ways to um, scale the workforce, I think, will likewise be really important. But generally, I think this is a, a critically important area um, for the Genome Institute to be involved in. Thank you. All interesting points and things that we will consider when writing the RFA. Uh, the other discussants? We are fully supportive. I think it's a great uh, program. It uh, really nicely synergizes with the consortia in, um, initiated genomic medicine programs. Um, I was at the last uh, meeting and um, was really impressed by the the spectrum of the different projects that were being funded and uh, really great innovative ideas. I also like the emphasis on new investigators, health disparities, community engagement, and um, encouraging um, investigators from outside of the major academic centers to participate. So I, I'm very uh, supportive. I guess um, one issue would be uh, you talk about programmatic balance, mm -hmm. and uh, you have nominated certain topics that are of interest to the Institute. Uh, and I don't know how you propose uh, balancing, you know, programmatic needs with what comes in the door. Um, particularly, if you have s excellent applications, but they don't seem to be in the pro the area that you want to emphasize. Um, how would you deal with that? Um, I think is a question. But otherwise, uh, I think it's a, a terrific program. Synergizes really well with the other portfolio that the NHGRI has. Yeah, I mean, as, as as far as programmatic balance goes, a lot of it is input from council members. So once the applications do come yeah. in, council will provide a secondary level of review, and your input is highly needed there. Um, we'll also talk to our colleagues internally, see what other applications have been coming in. Sometimes we do have investigator-initiated applications that don't come through AGMR, um, but those are all in consideration and part of the larger discussion, but that's a great point. So I'm incredibly supportive of this. I think not only are the grants that have been funded incredibly important uh, grants, but they're incredibly important junior investigators being funded who are really our future. I particularly appreciated the strengthening of language around community engagement and diversity. And you know, I think it's a no-brainer. Anyone else? All right, motion to approve, second. All in favor? No opposed, no abstaining.